Story time with Adam and Don. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us again for another virtual story time here at the Canyon City Public Library. Did I start our story times off with a song? It goes a little something like, Oh, welcome, welcome everyone, and now you're here, let's have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone, now you're here, let's have some fun. Good job, everyone. Hopefully everyone is still staying safe and enjoying our virtual story times. The one that is on the list today, um, pumpkin heads. Pumpkin Heads by Wendell Miner, Blue Sky Press, an imprint of Scholastic Incorporated. October is here, it's time to pick a pumpkin. On Halloween, every pumpkin becomes a pumpkin head. Some are big, some are small. Some may float high in the sky. And some peek from windows. And some go for hayride. Some pumpkin heads pretend to be cowboys. Or snowmen. Or witches. Some pumpkin heads will greet for trick or treat. And some will scare crows. Ooh. Pumpkin heads can be found in the strangest of places. But no matter where you may find them, pumpkin heads of all shapes and sizes hope you have a happy Halloween. Pumpkin Heads by Wendell Miner. Hopefully everybody's still staying safe and practicing their good hygiene still. Um, today we were able to sing our hand washing song. I hopefully everybody remembers it. It goes a little something like tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Scrub them all together, scrub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Good job, guys. This is a story about a pumpkin who had no stump. His name was Stumpkin. Written by Lucy Ruth Cummins and published by Athenium Books for Young Readers. It was a few days before Halloween. Outside a little shop in a big city, a shopkeeper placed some pumpkins on the shelves. A girl came and looked at the pumpkins. When she was done, she picked one up and carried it away. The other pumpkins worried after their friend. But later they spotted him across the street and way up high. He was a jack-o'-lantern. Beneath his lovely stem, he now had two triangle eyes, a nose, and a giant toothy smile. He had a new home, a perch all to himself high above the street. What more could anyone want, thought the pumpkins. They were thrilled for their friend and thrilled that they too might one day be jack-o'-lanterns. They were all happily lost in thought, imagining themselves as jack-o'-lanterns when one pumpkin realized something was very wrong. Poor little pumpkin. Poor little stemless pumpkin, with just a stump, not a stem. Poor little Stumpkin. Still, there was plenty to like about Stumpkin. He was a handsome pumpkin, as orange as a traffic cone, 
He was as big as a basketball and twice as round. Stem Schmem. Who knows, some people might even prefer a stemless pumpkin. Days passed and more people came. Some pumpkins left. Some pumpkins stayed. It wasn't yet Halloween. There were still plenty of windows that needed jack-o'-lanterns. Who would be lucky enough to take home Stumpkin? As orange as an orange. As big as a basketball. Round. He was very nearly the perfect pumpkin. Very nearly. Truly. The next day, new people came. And the shopkeeper's cat settled on Stumpkin's smooth top. Then it happened. A brilliant baby chose Stumpkin. Until a bad dog ruined it. And the baby changed his mind. Oh well, thought Stumpkin. It was the day of Halloween. There were still a few empty windows. Two were left on the shopkeeper's shelf. A boy came, and when the boy left, Stumpkin remained. The gourd, thought Stumpkin. I guess that's that. It was Halloween night, and the shop had closed. There were no more days left. The shopkeeper scooped up poor Stumpkin and carried him off. dark. There's a triangle. Is that an eye? Oh look, it's two eyes. Stumpkin wouldn't be getting a window and he wouldn't be getting a new home. He already had a home. And that made Stumpkin very, very happy. The end. Stumpkin. The next couple weeks we will be celebrating one book for Colorado. It's in its ninth year. Um, the, book, the book chosen this year was The Little Red Fort. Uh, please stop by. We have copies for our youngest of patrons. So please stop in the library and pick up your copy today. The Little Red Fort by Brenda Mayer. Pictures by Sonia Sanchez. It's published by Scholastic Inc. Ruby's mind was always full of ideas. Hmm. One day, she found some old boards. Who wants to help me build something? She asked her brothers. Oscar Lee pretended not to hear her. Rodrigo gave her a look that could melt popsicles, and Jose almost fell off the fence. You don't know how to build anything, they said. Ruby shrugged. Then I'll learn. And she did. Who wants to help me draw the plans? Ruby asked. The boys clutched their sides and howled with laughter. Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll draw them myself. And she did. Satisfied with her plans, Ruby asked, who wants to help me gather supplies? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll gather them myself. And she did. When all the supplies were gathered, Ruby asked, Who wants to help me cut the boards? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll cut them myself. And she did. When all the boards were neatly cut, Ruby sang, Who wants to help me hammer the nails? Not me, said Oscar Lee. I don't think so, 
said Rodrigo. No way, said Jose. I'm too busy. Fine, said Ruby. I'll hammer them myself. And she did. Soon Ruby's creation was complete. Who wants to play in my fort, she called. Me, me, said Oscar Lee. Let's go, said Rodrigo. I'll play, said Jose. I'm not busy anymore. Not so fast, Ruby said. You didn't help me draw the plans, or gather the supplies, or cut the boards, or hammer the nails. You said I didn't know how to build. And you laughed at me. I'm going to play in the fort by myself. And she did. We didn't want to play anyway, said the boys. But they did. So they huddled, whispered, and got straight to work. Oscar Lee made a mailbox. Rodrigo planted flowers. Jose painted the fort fire engine red. And Ruby was delighted. That evening, the boys followed a delicious aroma to a fort warming party. Who wants to help me clean this plate? Ruby asked. We do, the boys said. And they did. The end. The Little Red Fort. One book for Colorado's choice this year, folks. So please stop in and pick up your copy of it today. Well, thank you for joining us again for another virtual story time here at the Canyon City Public Library. Hopefully everybody is staying healthy and safe. Um, we have started our normal story times back up in person. So Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays all at 1030. Please come out and see us and join us for an in-person story time. Uh, we'll have some special events coming up. So please check out our website, find out all the good things that we'll be doing here at the library. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time.